and found that these four districts were over 97% similar when it came to the population found within each district. The only difference would be here on the border of Smith and Washington County, there is a town, town of Saltville, which on the A map on Monday was in District 40. And on the B map, we split down the county line. And then both districts 36 uh, were the exact same. And there are two towns here, Alta Vista and Hurt, that are straddling the county line, but are in separate counties. So what we found is that going uh, from 2% to 5% population deviation uh, allowed our, count or our districts to match up closer uh, with the Saltville being the only difference. And then it's, you know, on a case by case basis or up to the commission would be, what is a higher priority criteria? Is it keeping counties whole in this instance when a town straddles two counties or could there be a community interest that's a higher priority of keeping Saltville all in one district? And I'll reiterate what some other people have said earlier that when districts are similar, uh, you know, changing 10% of the population of one district to match another does have a great uh, sort of domino effect on the rest of the map. And so that's our overall thought process of how we came to get these four districts in common. Thank you. Madam Co-Chair, this is Brian Tyson again. I think that there also is another one more consideration in District 37 Mr. Morgan had, if, if you want to hear from him briefly on that about incumbency. Um, I, I do in a minute. I think Ms. Harris had a question, so let's get her question in there so that um, the response will include be included to her question with her question. So, uh, Zach, um, so if we put Saltville into... District 39, is that a huge, I mean, does that have significant ripple effects with that small of a community, but you keep the community whole? Um, no, it doesn't. So in this case, having Saltville, either having it split or having it in either District 39 or 40, the population is within the 5% deviation in every case. So as we're we're trying to make changes on the fly here, it, if we said put Saltville in District 39, you could do that. And then if do we vote on as an example, do we vote on something like that? And it's then it's nailed down, and then we keep moving. Madam Chair, it would be nailed down in the sense that <laughs> any of these maps are nailed yes, down. Yes, well. yes, okay. yes. With that caveat, Meg. Thank you. Madam Chairman? Yes, Senator. Have, have, and I don't think I got the, well, I did not get the Southwest Virginia comments. Do we have any public comment about Saltville, or is this the first that they would have heard about Saltville? No, we do not. I think that's the big issue, and, I, and that's the point where we're at before we make a change like that. I think it's great to know we can make that change, but... If uh, I think we want to know people in Southwest Virginia, what do you want? That is an issue. So anyone listening, that would be an excellent thing for you to comment on if you have an opinion about the town of Saltville versus versus the county. Who do you have more in common with? And uh, you know, it's a decision that could go either way. We want to know. I don't live there, so I, my decision really is to support what the people of South Bill would want. Um, yes, Mr. Kumar, and then Senator Barker, and then Mr. Harrell, did you want to comment? Thank you, Madam Chair. That? Okay. This is uh, Sean Kumar. So, I mean, in this instance, it seems that we're either going to interfere with a county boundary or a town boundary, and our <coughs> criteria have already said that we're going to favor cities and, and counties above towns. So, you know, and we're going to have to pick our battles, and I appreciate this is a good example where there's an inconsistency, but, you know, um, our criteria make this decision easy for us, barring that we end up hearing a lot of public comment to the contrary. I say we go with our criteria, which is to keep the county whole and split the town in this instance. Senator Barker. Uh, th thank you, Madam Chair. George Barker uh, presenting here. 
the I, I heard reference to uh, exceeding the two percent limit, but not the five percent limit. Can we get data? Uh, is it two point five percent? Is it four point five percent deviation? And what would be the impact upon all of the districts being looked at in Southwest Virginia right now? Um, Thank you. Um, all things, good things to consider. Mr. Harrell? Uh, I, I think uh, <coughs> Senator Barker makes a good point. And we, we need to, uh, if we're going to en enlarge the deviation, which is fine with me, if we, we if our lawyers tell us that we're on legal solid ground in doing that, um, if we don't, and, and Mr. Kumar's point I think is uh, very important too, we, we're just getting started here. And the whole part of the state that we agree on, we're spending this much time, and I don't really think salt bill, nobody commented about salt bill at all. And there were almost, there were very few comments from Southwest and Southside, and Southside only had three. And so if we don't proceed faster, we will never get through part of it. This is only four out of 40. So, and we've got 100 house districts. So we got to figure out a way to get through this quicker. Madam, I'm not, I'm not sure there's a motion on the table, but... Um, Madam Co-Chair, this might be an appropriate time for a motion. This is Meg Lamb. If someone wants to go one way or the other on Ma keeping Saltville whole or splitting it. Madam Chairman. Yes? I, I'm going to suggest... Senator McNichol. ...that we leave it the same, I think, as Mr. Kumar said, we put counties above towns. It's consistent with what that is. I don't know that we need a motion to change it, so I would say let's leave it and go to the next topic. Okay, um, I I like that idea coming from over here. Moving on, but Mr. Morgan, uh, where are you on this, uh, or something sure. else? Sure. Uh, no, I have two things. One on this point, what I would point out is that in the two Senate districts that we're discussing in Southwest, the combination of both Senate districts counties would require the division of one county. So in the case of the plan that I drew, my division of the county was Smith County, and that also had the effect of keeping Saltville intact. The other plan has a division of Pulaski County very close to Radford. It's two voting precincts there. So whichever way you go, it affects one county uh, split either way. Um, so if you were to go with keeping Smith County whole, then you would be dividing uh, Pulaski, or if you keep Pulaski whole, you would be dividing Smith because of the the deviation issues. But I, it's neutral in that respect. It's it's one county division or another. So if you say you know follow the county uh, locality boundaries regarding Saltville, that's fine. But then you're going to have to split another county. So it doesn't reduce a, a jurisdiction split but it just replaces one with the other. So in that sense, it's neutral and makes perfect sense to go either way with this. Um, and if you say counties are a higher criteria um, in your consideration, that's not a problem. I think that is what we're saying right now is that counties are higher. That's um, what I've heard from pretty much everyone and at this point. So why don't we move forward and that's the route we're going and put the pieces that fall based on that decision and let us know what the next thought we need to come up with is. Um, I can, um, I guess in the interest of moving forward, I can show you, uh, uh, you know, in the same way that Senator Barker showed how to uh, change a few districts in Northern Virginia to respect the, the incumbency issues. I can show you another quick example of a delegate district where I've, there's two incumbents in one district and by moving basically two voting precincts, it would resolve that issue. I could demonstrate that if you like in, in one minute. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll share my screen in just a moment. Um, and I'm just going to bring up a House of Delegates districts. And for reference, this is in Loudoun County. Um, so if you have any of the plans um, or uh, information that's been provided already, um, you could look at the delegate districts in Loudoun County. Um, just a moment here. Let me, I just need to 
change one setting, hopefully. And while you're doing that, I'm going to put this out there for everyone um, next Monday. And certainly uh, this is probably not going to be good. Good. I, well, we'll see. How does everyone feel about going to 12 instead of eight, uh, 11? Is that... It's a, it's a, oh, I'm sorry. Work. Okay. Well, it's either starting at 12 or going an extra hour. Is that? Start at 12. Starting at 12. Is that something that would be palatable? As, and I mean that just because we just need to, we need more time. Um, we're getting to the point where we spent three hours and I think we just need more Madam time. I don't, I don't know what the feasibility is for everyone now. Uh, can we check with staff? Because I yes. saw eyes bulging when you said starting at 12. Yes, I did I'm not review it, this I, with staff. I, I just saw, want to be clear. So I, I'm good with it, but I just saw their eyes, so I don't know how it affects them. It probably affects We just them wanted to make sure poorly. we had access to the room okay. an hour earlier. And so I just want to put that out there. I don't know when the decision needs to be made. It doesn't need to be made right this second as the maps are going up, but just anticipating the time, we're all going to, I think, so, want more time if we're going to go through and look at all these decisions. Madam Chair. So, yes, you're delegates. Asking, for what it's worth, I'd rather I'd rather tack on the time at the end than, than get down here earlier. Because again, part of the I think the logic of going a half day was so that some of us didn't have to devote an entire day to each of these meetings. But because uh, once it goes to twelve, then I'm leaving at ten, and then I might as well be here all day. So for what it's worth, I'd prefer to tack on the time at the end. But I know staff would rather go home on time, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, everybody think there. everybody think about it. Let's uh, look at some more maps and see what kind of thing that we're going to be looking at. This is going to be sort of a demonstration of what the map drawers can do in real time where we say, hey, we like this, and they change some things around, and we can talk about it. So picture yeah, yeah, so, how long that's going to take. Okay, so yeah, I'll just do this as fast as possible. I've shared my screen. Um, and to um, to the co-chair's point earlier about Hanover County, you know, you pointed out in the Senate map that a community of interest to you, you pointed out that there was an area that was split. That was an easy thing to fix and certain requests are, are really easy to do. Like for example, in this proposed district 26, there, uh, sorry, I just made the change. So that's basically one incumbent, David Reed currently represents district 32 and the boundary of the existing district is largely the same as this boundary, it's changed. And then there's another incumbent here in district 87. So by making, I made, I moved one voting precinct there. And what it's done is the population alignment of district 28, which is the yellow district here, is now outside of the 2% the deviation range. However, all you would have to do is make a minor adjustment, which I would suggest I would do either in a, a, like a partial precinct where I could just take the minimum amount of population um, into District 26. You know, some, this is an area that I would suggest might be a good idea to do this. It's right along the Dulles Greenway. And, you know, again, there, there's other ways to do this, but just as a quick resolution and following visible boundaries, road boundaries. The Dulles Greenway is a very well-known boundary. Um, you know, th that or another cut would balance the district's population. But the goal, again, was just to show you that it's fairly easy. There's just a circumstance where the delegates live close to each other. One is on the edge of a district and it's relatively easy to make the population accommodations for something like that. So in the next draft of, of maps, I would do things like that. Some very simple things that uh, would be an easy fix. Uh, we have some comment, shockingly. Uh, Mr. Kumar and uh, Delegate, can we hear from Delegate McQuinn just because we haven't heard from you? <laughs> just just wanted to raise a question because I, I think in terms of making those changes uh, and this is um, how do we it looks like the changes you would be making would be sort of blocks is that am I wrong with um, 
what the, the modification that you were talking about, or is it a precinct, or is it, you know, a little bit, little more yeah. expanded area? Sure, to answer, to answer your question, Commissioner, um, in the preference would be to exchange one precinct for another, but in highly populated areas, it might just be a portion of a precinct, and if it's it's necessary to split a precinct, I would suggest doing it along uh, well-defined boundaries such as roads or rivers. And um, you know, in that instance, I could trade one precinct for another or one precinct and a portion of another. It resolves the issue fairly easily. That's what I'm trying to show is that there's a number of those things that I think both map drawers could make a, a good faith effort towards consensus to resolve some of those issues. Um, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Follow up. And, and the reason I'm saying that, because as we do this and make these modifications or whatnot, that we give, uh, if, if at all possible, not to have districts where there are, there's um, uh, one side is in the 39th and the other side is in the 38th of a street. Uh, we had that going on as well, you know, with these split precincts and whatnot. And some streets, there were split. So if we can at all avoid that, uh, I would hope we would in, in drawing these maps and making modifications. Madam Co-Chair. Uh, yes, Ms. Harris. Um, uh, John, I appreciate you showing the nimbleness of, of making adjustments. And uh, Zach, I appreciate you explaining what you and John did together in Southwestern Virginia. This is to my fellow commissioners. Um, we, we are maybe a third of the way through the Senate map, and then we have all of the House map to do. I think we have three meetings scheduled next week, right. and I'm just wondering whether we should book the whole week um, because I, I'm just trying to look at the time because next week is it. Um, and we, we haven't started really on the House maps we are a third of the way through the Senate maps, and I, I just I'm putting it out there for consideration in order to work in tandem with the um, map drawers to tr and attorneys to try to get through this. Uh, Mr. Kumar. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so on the on the example that Mr. Morgan just showed, that was helpful, and on um, on Delegate McQuinn's point. You know, I think we've heard overwhelmingly that people want us to avoid splitting precincts wherever possible. So it seemed like Mr. Morgan was trying to split a precinct in effort to reserve, um, you know, a margin, a population under the 2% threshold. I think in that instance, I don't want to speak for the commission, but we may want to take, discuss or consider, especially since they're going to be drawing a lot of these based on our guidance today, that I'd rather see them go above the 2% deviation there in population to preserve splitting a precinct. Madam Chair. This is Meg Lamb. Yes, ma'am. Um, to the point of split precincts, I think it's important to recognize that while we're doing this, the localities are also redrawing their election districts and their precincts lines. Um, split precincts are inevitable. We passed a law a few years ago that will require localities to come after we go and draw the map, draw our districts, and make sure that their precincts aren't split within districts. But this commission is not going to be able to avoid doing that. Thank you for that clarification, Meg. I, I think we appreciate that. Um, and uh, we'll do, uh, Mr. Kumar, and then any other kind of closing comments we've got to hear from our virtual people. And then I think after we leave this meeting, staff will go back and rip their hair out and try to see <laughs> how many more meetings we can put in next yeah. week to get work done. And we'll see if it's feasible. Um, I, we'll see what happens. So. Mr. Kumar. That's helpful, Ms. Lamb. And, and on um, Co-Chair Harris's plan, I mean, that's, that's just not even going to be possible for me during the business day. I mean, which, you know, is why we've been talking about scheduling for months. And if we thought we needed to preserve time, so it could have been held. But if we, if we want to do virtual evening meetings or whatnot, that, and, and obviously staff will work and probably doesn't make sense to discuss, it. we'll probably need to send out polling. But, um, you know, something I could have done if we had held the, the week two months ago, but that's not an option for me now. Madam Chair. Madam Clerk. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go Claire. Um, I do have everyone's availability since we filled out the schedule. So I can see from 
our calendar that we could have a morning meeting on Tuesday and then there is no availability on Thursday. So that's the one day that we would have to work out. Madam Chair? Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Yes, so Delegate avail Simon? Availability was availability when you asked. And then when you set the schedule, we allowed we some things to fill in some of those spots, just, just for what it's worth. And again, this is the highest priority for me. I'll be here, but just to no, make that point. I understand that. I just wanted to make it clear that we did ask for the availability at that time, and that things changed. So from what we have now, this is what it looks like. Mr. Feliciano? Um, well, I was going to say exactly what Delegate Simon said. So I would recommend that if we're going to do this, then... And I know this is even going to be hard for some people, but like Mr. Kumar, Tuesday and Thursday for me are out next week. There's no way. If we need, if need be, and I know this will be hard, but extending the days that we are meeting, making them longer. I mean, I know some people are going to be like, ah, I can't do that either, but I can't. There's no way I could do another two meetings next week. That's just not going to happen. Okay. Um, so... What we'll probably do then is uh, Co-Chair Harris and I will go back to the drawing board and try to figure out something that may work for us so we can at least get presentations, maybe in a virtual capacity. Um, we will try to come up with something so that we can pick up the pace without getting rid of our accuracy and um, not hurt. We're going to try to strike the balance. And still, we, we appreciate everybody's schedules. Absolutely understand. Um, Madam Chair. So we'll try something. Senator Stanley. New. Yes, Senator Stanley. Well, you know, and and we're trial lawyers, so we work on weekends. Um, you know, Saturdays or Sundays may be better, or maybe something at least to talk about. As long as staff can, I know this building's closed on the weekends, but we can probably come in here and do this, can't we? I mean, if need be. And we all committed to this thing, and I mean, I know probably a weekend is better to schedule right now than a weekday. Because we'll certainly talk with Capitol building. Police, Senator Stanley. I know staff and legislators will be able to access the building on the weekends, but we'll need to ask about the citizens. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we'll consider all of our options. Uh, virtual meetings, we still need to process comments. I know that that's still a piece that needs to happen and review shape files with maps, and we may just have to divvy it up to everyone and ask that you all um, think about some of the comments, uh, pick some good ones, and, and talk about them, and we'll get them to the map drawers. They just need the guidance. We don't necessarily need to have votes, um, but let's we'll talk about our options, what we can legally do to accommodate schedules but still get our work done. Um, so can, now we can move to the public comment period. I, how many people, Shay, do we have? Are both of them on? I'm not sure. I, I may have a list. I do have a list. Um, okay, Paul Goldman, if we could hear from Paul Goldman. We're going to try to figure something out. We will try to figure something out. We could not, yeah, we could not have, we could not have cleared this whole week knowing that this was going to be the week. Um, okay, um, is Monica Sarmiento available? Whoever's available, let's put them on. Good morning, members of the commission. Can you hear me? We can. Welcome. Oh, 
Thank you so much. So my name is Monica Sarmiento and I'm the executive director for the Virginia Coalition for Immigrant Rights. Members of the commission, today you spoke about the great diversity that Virginia has seen over the last decade, particularly in immigrant communities. And with the upcoming public hearings, we still uh, see a big disparity in regards to language access for our community members to go ahead and submit their comments in regards to the mappings uh, that are happening. Uh, and so with that, I really urge that uh, something be done in order to be able to go ahead and have language access to these community members. Uh, we are actively organizing community members to go ahead and speak on that map uh, proposed, but of course, many of them, English is a second language. Uh, and this commission has prided itself in talking a great deal about equity and being able to be as inclusive as possible and is absolutely crucial for our community members to be able to understand and also to be understood uh, when they speak about their perspectives on the maps. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, do we have Mr. Goldman available? No. Okay. So... Does everyone understand their marching orders? I'm sure you're going to get a lengthy follow-up email from Ms. Harris and I at some point. And then uh, map drawers, uh, everything we talked about for the Senate, I please also be doing it for the House of Delegates. I understand we're not going to talk about that on Monday, but we need to keep, we need to keep going. Um, and I understand we didn't make all the decisions today, but we need to keep moving forward. So everything we said today, apply it to the other stuff too and be working on that in the background as well. And uh, if there's any questions, certainly attorneys, please reach out to us and we will clarify anything that needs to be clarified. We are adjourned.